Well, Victoria has uh, been clamped down with coronavirus restrictions again and the state of emergency extended for four more weeks following a worrying spike in COVID community transmissions. The Andrews government has pointed to families gathering as the leading cause for the jump in cases. Joining me now, Victorian Liberal Senator Sarah Henderson. Sarah, thanks for joining us. This is a concern, it's a setback. Uh, and of course, uh, you guys have gone through the harshest of all the uh, uh, you know, restrictions and, and, and so forth. Uh, and yet you've now landed with, uh, well, Pauline Hanson didn't call it a second wave, but it's certainly an unnerving spike, I would re regard it as. Well, Peter, good evening. And it is very concerning what we have seen here in Victoria. Of course, uh, the government led by the Prime Minister and through the National Cabinet uh, can rightly be proud of the way in which the coronavirus pandemic has been managed, including in relation to all of the restrictions. But it's very disappointing that we have seen this double standard here in Victoria. 10,000 protesters, that seems OK. Uh, but, of course, not small restaurants reopening. And, uh, of course, we now know that some uh, 50 people, they were all planned, of course, in every restaurant and cafe, uh, able to open today. And now that 50-person limit has been taken back to 20 people. So... There are a lot of people very, very disappointed and for the Premier to blame Victorian families in particular when he has said nothing about the illegal protest involving 10,000 people is incredibly disappointing and that's probably one of the very uh, pointed reasons why Daniel Andrews is not to be found today. Well, I was going to say he has been pretty quiet over the last few days and there would be a lot of businesses, a lot of small businesses, a lot of tourism operators who would be desperately disappointed at what's happened here. And you're right, there are double standards at play. I mean, on the one hand, you've had people out there, uh, you know, engaging in protests, not an arrest in sight. And yet in Victoria, four times the amount of fines imposed on your good folk down there, more than uh, New South Wales, and three times more than Queensland. And yet... Now you're in this situation where, despite all the hard work and 99.9% .9 of your population doing the right thing, you've now had this massive setback. Absolutely. And, Peter, in regional Victoria, there is not one active case. Regional Victorians have done an exceptional job and all those wonderful restaurants and cafes and bars ready to really reopen today have now had all their plans cut. And, of course, that has cost them dearly, cost them in terms of stock that they cannot use, in terms of people who've been hired who have now had to be put on hold. Uh, so it really is quite devastating. But uh, as you also said and reminded everyone again, uh, the, the hypocrisy between allowing an illegal protest to go ahead uh, and, of course, the blame game in relation to Victorian families is uh, pretty upsetting. And when you think about it now in Victoria, we have got a spike, about 100 active cases, but that, of course, has meant that some 1,000 people have come into close contact with those 100 people. So uh, we have the potential to uh, really go backwards from here. And uh, as I say, this arguably need not happen if the law had been applied equally across Victoria a number of weeks ago when that protest happened. Now, we saw last week the shenanigans involving the Labor Party, some horrendous text messages between a couple of Labor figures. Um, I, don't, I don't understand how Victorians put up with this rubbish. I mean, we saw it with the red shirt scandal. This is on another level. But uh, mm. uh, most unedifying, most unedifying, and I see today where the Premier <clears throat> has come out and he's banned ministerial staffers from actually being involved in, uh, in, in, in branches. I mean, uh, so he should. But uh, this is rotten to the core, this Labor Party in Victoria. Peter, these allegations are incredibly concerning. And as Albo himself said many years ago, and that's a video that we're seeing being played uh, quite frequently today, if you cannot govern your party, you cannot govern the country. And in the case of Victoria, there's only one thing for Victorians to do, and that is to elect a Liberal national state government in uh, 2022. 
Uh, this is an intolerable situation. The Labor Party in Victoria has absolutely gone off the rails, but not just the state members. We have uh, also seen a number of federal MPs implicated, uh, including, of course, Anthony Byrne, and the allegations in relation to Anthony Byrne are also serious. So it is an absolute basket case here in Victoria. And now, of course, that we have seen Daniel Andrews put one of the his uh, sidekicks when it comes to negotiating the Belt and Road Agreement, uh, Danny Pearson, he's gone into Cabinet. Again, a very concerning. Uh, so I, I really think, and I say to all Victorians and everyone watching tonight, uh, this Labor Party in Victoria cannot be trusted anymore. We just have got to get rid of them and put Michael O'Brien and his team in as soon as we can. Senator Sarah Henderson, thanks for joining us on Sky News Across Australia. Always appreciate your time. Great to talk to you, Peter.